boys and girls. I have a lesson for you tonight, so I hope that you're ready to listen. And I want you to have your Bible, most of all. We're going to turn to the book of Jonah. I have my Bible right here. And then I'm going to be folding a piece of paper during the story. Now, I am telling the story while I fold the paper. You don't have to fold a piece of paper with me because I'm going to make something. But I can include the link for your parents to see where I learned how to fold the piece of paper to make something that goes along with our story tonight. So I want to tell you a story about a fish and a man. Now yesterday my boys were fishing and they've been doing that a lot. They love to fish. They caught some fish yesterday. But last night after we came in the house, I could smell something fishy. And I said to Zach, my oldest, he should know to wash his hands after he fishes. But I said, Zach, did you wash your hands? It smells. You stink. And he smelled like a fish. Because after you catch a fish, you grab the fish and you take pliers or your fingers and you try to get the hook out of the fish's mouth. And when you're done fishing, you should really wash your hands because they are gonna stink and you're gonna smell like a fish. He went and washed his hands. Well, think about this. What if you were like the person in our story and you didn't just smell the outside of the fish, you were smelling the inside of the fish. That's what the person in our story tonight, he was smelling the inside nasty stomach of the fish. Now I'm reading from the book of Jonah and I want you to listen because Jonah heard the word of the Lord and he had a choice. After he heard it, he could choose if he was going to obey or if he didn't want to obey and do the opposite. Now I have this paper and I'm going to tell the story while I do this. But in our story tonight, Jonah was a man that God, the word of the Lord, came and spoke to him. And he told Jonah a very specific thing Jonah needed to obey. Now, the word of the Lord, God's word, the Bible, this is how God speaks to me and to you. When I read it, and I hope that we read it every day, when I read it, I see what God says, and God wants me to obey. But the Bible says, and I'll read from Jonah chapter 1. The Bible says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. God said to Jonah, Arise, get up. I want you to go, and I want you to go to a wicked city, the city of Nineveh. And actually, this is where the enemies of God lived, in Nineveh. And they have great wickedness. And we all are sinners. God wants us to turn from our sin. But the people in Nineveh needed to hear, so Jonah was going to be the preacher. And God told him, I want you to go to Nineveh. And Jonah had a choice. Jonah's choice was right in front of him clearly. Go preach in what city? In Nineveh. Now, the next verse tells us something that Jonah did. Verse 3, but Jonah rose up to flee, to run away. Jonah thought he could run from God. Do you know what the Bible says? That God, he sees everything that we do. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro. He's watching. Jonah rose up to flee. And he thought, instead of going to Nineveh, I'm going to go to another city called Tarshish. Tarshish. And he said, I'm going to go from the presence of the Lord. I don't think, no matter, I know, no matter how hard we try, no matter where we want to hide, we can't go anywhere that God does not see us. And as a believer, as a Christian, the Holy Spirit lives inside of me to guide me and to teach me. He's with me. If I'm going to choose to sin and not obey God, 
the Holy Spirit knows exactly what I'm doing. He's going from the presence of the Lord. Now, I want to show you real quick on a map this area where Jonah lived. So let me show you this on the map. This big ocean is called the Mediterranean Sea. It's the blue part. It's a sea. Anything blue on the map is water. See all the water? Anything that's white or tan, that's the land. And so Jonah, he actually lived in this area, and God said, I want you to go up here to Nineveh and preach to those wicked people. But the Bible says he wanted to get away from God. So he got on a ship here uh, in Joppa. And the Bible says that he paid money to get onto the ship, and he went down into the ship, and he was going to go with those men all the way across the Mediterranean Sea, the big ocean water, the sea water, and go all the way over here where they were going to Tarshish. So if God told him to go here, and he decides to go all the way over here, we know he's really trying to get away, and he knows he's going the opposite way. Boys and girls, when God gives us a command, we should never go the opposite way of his command. We should, with his help, decide to be obedient to whatever God commands us in his word to do. And God told him exactly where to go. And the Bible says he got on a ship and he went, he thought he was going from the presence of the Lord. But we know he can't go anywhere that God can't see him. And he was on the ship. He went down to the bottom and, and he was on the ship for his trip. Now, if you can see this, I have made a ship. Now, it's just a simple boat ship and it's gonna sail all the way across the Mediterranean Sea to Tarshish. And I've got a little Lego guy and he's gonna go in there and that's Jonah. The Bible says, the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. A great wind? That means there's a great storm. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea. So this boat is going everywhere, rocking this way and that way, everywhere. And the Bible says the ship was like to be broken. This ship was going to break apart just from the water and the wind. And the mariners were so afraid the Bible says they cried every man unto his God. And the Bible uses in verse number five, the little G. A lowercase g means a false God. Not the true God of heaven, not the real God, but the false gods. And they cried to their gods and they were praying and they were so scared. And then they began to take things off the ship and throw it into the water because if they throw stuff out, the ship will be lighter. And the ship, they just were trying to do everything they could as this ship was in the storm. And the Bible says, Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay and he was fast asleep. He did not know anything that was going on. And the shipmaster came to him and said, Why are you sleeping? Get up. Call upon your God. We need help. And they also, the ship, the ship um, men that were there, they needed to find out who was causing all this trouble. Who is on this ship? That has made God angry with us. So the Bible says they cast lots that they would know whose cause the evil was upon us. And they, they, in the way in which they did it, God revealed to them that it was Jonah. He was the one that had made God to send this big storm and this ship was going to break apart. And they began to ask him questions. You better tell us where you're from and what you're doing, 
and where you're going and who your people are. And he told them, I am a Hebrew. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Now, wait a minute. If Jonah really feared the Lord, the God of heaven that made the sea and the land, if he really did fear God, he would be obeying. This would not even be happening. The men were so afraid. The men knew that he had fled from the presence of the Lord because Jonah told them. Do you know, oftentimes when we disobey, we know exactly what we're doing. We don't have to tell anybody in, in our hearts we know. And if our mom or dad were to ask us what we're doing, they, they know too when we're not obeying. Most of all, God knows. And they said unto him, what shall we do unto thee that all of this storm will be calm? And do you know what Jonah said? Take me and cast me over. He says to them, just throw me over. And the Bible says they tried to row and they tried to get the ship to go in the right direction, but the wind and the storm was not letting them go anywhere that they wanted to go. And the Bible tells us, he, the Bible tells us in verse 15, they took up Jonah and they cast him forth into the sea. And the sea ceased her raging. The Bible says that once Jonah was out, the sea was quiet and the storm was over. And these men, the Bible says, feared the Lord exceedingly. And they offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. And the next verse says, the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. So here's Jonah in the sea, the Mediterranean Sea, and God had prepared a great fish and he swallowed Jonah up. And the mouth of the fish shut and Jonah went into the belly of the fish. The Bible tells us three days and three nights. For three days and three nights, this fish swims around. Not, you know, God had prepared that fish. That means God had shown that fish where to go. And he must have told that fish, this, this man, Jonah, that's what you're going to eat next. But in chapter two, verse one, the Bible says, Jonah prays. Jonah needed help. There was only one place Jonah could get help from. Was there anybody else in the fish that Jonah could get help from? It was only Jonah. And he needed God's help. He cried from the fish's belly. Whatever trouble we're in, we cry out to God for help. And as he talks to God, he, he knows God hears him. Two times Jonah says, God hears. And even though this fish is swimming around, God hears him. And towards the end of chapter two, Jonah begins to offer thanksgiving to the Lord. And maybe he realizes God is keeping him alive in here. God has prepared the plan for Jonah. Jonah was giving thanks and he was telling God he would obey. And he says in the verse, salvation is of the Lord. Now we know God is the only one who can save. God is the only one who can help. And the Bible says the Lord spake unto the fish. So God told the fish to vomit out Jonah on dry land. So this fish went to the land and he, and he was going the, he went the opposite direction from the boat, probably because he didn't need to head to Tarshish. God wanted Jonah to get to, um, back to Nineveh, and the fish spits Jonah out on dry land.
He must have been disgusting and smelly. Ugh! But he was thankful and he was ready to listen to God's word. And the Bible says the Lord spoke to Jonah the second time and told him to go unto Nineveh, the great city, and preach unto it the preaching that they needed to hear. They were, they had great wickedness before God, but if they turned to God, God was the only way of salvation. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh and he preached to them. God gave Jonah a second chance to obey and he obeys. And the Bible tells us in chapter three, the people of Nineveh believed God. They were ready to believe God. And they began to turn from the evil way. And even the king said, the king of Nineveh told the people of Nineveh, everybody turn from your evil way. And God did not destroy Nineveh. The Bible says God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. He did not destroy Nineveh. God, the Bible says in Jonah chapter 4, God is a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repentance thee of the evil. Do you know that God, even Jonah knew, and Jonah wasn't happy, by the way, whenever Nineveh turned to God. Even after how God had given him mercy, Jonah was not happy when he gave the people of Nineveh mercy and forgave them. And that's another story we can learn from Jonah too. But today I think God would have us to realize this. We might be very small. We are very small on the earth. Our God is great and wonderful in power, the creator of all the earth. We're just small people. But God sees exactly where we are. God has told us in his word exactly what he wants us to do. God has told us exactly how to be saved. And just like Jonah, we have a choice. We can obey God and do the things he wants us to do. Or we can try to go the total opposite direction. God sent punishment to Jonah. Remember, he put him in that fish's belly. And God gave Jonah mercy when he turned to him and prayed to him. And then Jonah obeyed. But I want us to remember that God, we can't run from the presence of the Lord God sees us in all that we do, and God wants us to obey. And when we obey, the Bible says God helps us. He gives grace to us. God will help us to do the things that he tells us to do. And I'm thankful for the story of Jonah. And um, I hope that you can learn something from this lesson tonight, and you enjoyed the story. And I'll make sure to post a way that you can watch this, how I learned how to do this. You can watch it and learn with a plain old piece of copy paper from your parents' printer. But I'm so thankful that you've been watching. And next Wednesday, we'll have the church open for you to come with your parents to spend time in prayer um, right in our own church building. And also this Sunday, we want to see you at church. And We'll be together, and we'll be able to worship God together this Sunday. So I can't wait to see you. Bye-bye.